Hi guys, welcome back to Garage Tech with me, Darren. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your AOS valve. So it's the air oil separator valve. This is on the Porsche Cayman 3.4 from 2009 to 2012. Um, so I'll get straight into it. So just to show you where the valve actually sits. So it sits up here at the back. So the first thing you will need to do is remove this top uh, cover from the top here. And then also the cover at the back that's in there just helps you to get to one of the nuts at the back um you will need to remove this pipe it comes upon across here now just to explain that obviously mine is slightly different here because i've got the ipd plenum chamber on it but if you've got the standard uh, plenum on it you'll see you should have two pipes one that goes into part uh, there and obviously then you've got a bit over this side so that's the first thing we're going to do is remove this bit of pipe and then we can actually get to um the ASO valve at the back there. So what I will do is uh, show you this. So these um, pipes come off, they are a little bit tricky, it's hard to do with just one hand. So I've, I've loosened it already just to make it easier just to show you, but um, it just pops off. But what you need to do is um, squeeze these two kind of bits uh, here. So when you kind of squeeze it, it just lifts it up because as you've got a catch to it. So when you squeeze it, you've got a catch here and a catch at the bottom. Now, what you can do if you're struggling to squeeze it to release it is uh, use a, a very small uh, flat blade screwdriver. Just be really careful because these can become quite brittle and they uh, snap quite easy. And if you snap this off, then you'll need a new pipe. And uh, these little pipes, they're not cheap. Um, you see my one's already got a bit of a kink in it. Um, so I'll be, uh, replacing it anyway but um, just so you can see so that's removing it off that end and then if you've got um, the standard um, plenum chamber then obviously you lift, have to remove your one either end so the same applies here so if you've got a manual you've probably got two cables here for your gear linkage so it gets a bit tricky to get in there press the two clips in very difficult with one hand Go. Now you'll know if your ASO valve is uh, leaking because if you just put your finger in there and check for uh, oil, there'll be an excess of oil in there. But once you've released that, you can get the valve, you can get the pipe out of the way. It's clipped in also here. I'll suggest what you do. I've already cleaned this out, but um, just for your reference, obviously that's how it would sit like that. Um, I used like a brake cleaner or engine degreasant to run through uh, the pipe just to uh, clean it out because obviously I knew that I had an excess of oil going through it. So just to clean it out to make sure it's nice and clean. Now that's out of the way, we can get to the valve at the back here. Now, whilst I'm showing you this, just to explain, obviously these valves, um, they're, they're, they're about 74, 75 pounds, depending where you get them from. I got mine directly from Porsche. Um, you can buy it on um, some other websites, but actually you tend to find that going direct to Porsche, they're about the same or similar price. I'd rather just go direct to Porsche and get it, at least I know I'm getting the latest uh, version, because sometimes they do change part numbers. Um, but now we've got um, that pipe out of the way. I'm gonna release this E10 um, bolt here, and then I'm gonna just slide off uh, this valve here. So this just lifts off. You can see it's a bit of a clip there, that bit there. And then this E10 here. So that's just gonna give me some room um, to get the valve out because it is very tight and it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle when you uh, come to take it out. Also just to note that you might find that you've got one of these kind of vacuum valves, um, solenoid valves, round rooted around this way. Um, again, because I've got the IPD plenum, it's slightly rerouted. Um, once you've kind of got that out of the way, now there is another uh, clip down here, 
I say a plug, I just remove that plug down here. It just gives a, again, a little bit more room when you're trying to remove the valve. Um, so just unplug that, don't forget to put it back, we'll put it all together, just gives a bit more room. This is for your um, fuel tank vent ventilation, uh, this, this pipe here. So again, careful, just be careful with it. Don't move it around too much because you don't want to crack or break it. Now you've got two um, bolts that hold the uh, AOS valve in place. So if you imagine that's how it sits at the moment. So you've got one which will be there and then you've got one on the other side. So that's this one. This is why you need to take that cover off the back so you can get to that one. There are two E10 um, bolts and let's see if I can just about show you where it sits. It's quite hard to see. I think it's just down there. So there's one there. Let's see if I can get in this way. And the other one's just there. Okay, so that's the two that you need to remove. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these. And the trickiest bit is then actually getting the valve out. That's the tricky bit. Uh, it can, it does come out. You don't need to remove anything else other than that. But um, it is just, as I said, it's a bit like playing uh, Tetris. Get it out now. I've got a pair of gloves on because uh, I want to keep my hands nice and clean because the ladies don't like dirty fingernails. And if you're any ladies watching, us guys don't like dirty fingernails either. Okay. Right, I'm just gonna put you up and then unscrew those two bolts and then show you how to get it out that hole. So I've just got my long extension with a bit of a wobbly end on. I said it was E10. Um, socket. So just go straight down inside there. Now, once you've unscrewed that bolt, um, if you've got like a long magnet, you can use that just to retrieve it. Otherwise, you can just leave it there for now. But uh, that's how long the bolt is. Now I need to get to the one over the other side. You know, it's actually easier to get inside the car to get to that one um, and release it from inside through the panel. You're, you're not to get to it from this side and, and release it is really difficult without taking that cover off. So save yourself some time messing around. Take the cover off at the back here and uh, get to it whilst you're there. You can have a nice inspection of the auxiliary belt or rib belt as well. Okay. Okay, with the cover off out of the way, as I said, you can see the bolt, it's just there. Um, relatively easy to get to. Um, just need a small ratchet. Now, what I would just say is, once you've loosened it, and you're starting to want to do it with your ratchet there should be a point where you should be able to at least do it by hand because your ratchet will get stuck in there because there's not a lot of room between the two so once you've loosened it you should be able to do it by hand so i'm just using using that socket now to unscrew it There we go. Careful not to drop it. I'm gonna lose it down there. Okay. So I'll leave that one in here. And then we can go back up the top. Okay, so now that both those bolts are removed, what you need to do is pull it up. Now it will be quite tight. You can kind of 
move it left and right. Just give them, start to loosen it up. And then you kind of need to pull it up now. Just watch your fingers, because uh, it'll probably come off with a bit of a pop, and then you want to end up getting them trapped between. So I've just kind of got between the two. Tug, there you go. Okay, so it does come out with a bit of a pop. And then once that's out of the way, this is the tricky bit. Um, so there's a bit of a uh, tack to this. So you can just about move it around. If you get it upside down, so it's then facing like that. And then if you kind of bring it up this way and turn it clockwise, um, anti clockwise as you kind of come out. Where you've got to turn it as you come. Just move my camera a bit. Up. So there we go. So I'll just do that again. I'm just going to put it back in. Okay, so once it, once it's in here, it's fairly easy to, to maneuver it and turn it around. But if you get it upside down, so it's something like that, and then just kind of start to wiggle it out, turn it anti-clockwise, and comes out like that. Okay, so with that now out of the way. We should be able to, I'll just show you this, see down into two ports where it comes from. There's some decent light in there. Okay, you might want to just clean those out with a bit of rag, just make sure it's nice and clean, and then you can go ahead and put the new one in. Okay. So with my new one ready to go, I'm just going to put a little bit of lubricant on these two seals. Now, uh, when you purchase this, um, a genuine one, obviously it comes with the seals. So just uh, bear that in mind if you're ordering it from Porsche. There's the chap there that I was speaking to, didn't even know that it came with a seal. So he tried to sell me those separately and they're about a tenner each. So I uh, swiftly returned those. But um, they come with the seals. I'm just going to put a little lubricant on it just so it makes it nice and easy to slip in. And obviously, in the finished position, it will be uh, like that. Okay. Okay, so going back uh, in, obviously, if we remember, we're sort of at this angle. So going in like this. And then turn it kind of clockwise as you go. And once we're in here, we can maneuver it to turn it back up the right way. You know when you're roughly about there, and then it's just a case of them pushing it into place. So now that I've kind of got it in place, what I've done is I've put uh, the two bolts in place, just nip those up by hand. It's really difficult to push it right down to get it to fit in um, because obviously the seals are new. Um, so they're, they're a little bit tighter than what the old seals are. So what I've done is I've actually just got the two E10 screws in place and I've slowly started to wind them in by hand. I'm not using a ratchet at this stage, but just kind of slowly winding it in by hand, bit by bit. And that kind of just starts to draw it in. Uh, once you're kind of near enough there, you can give it a bit of a wiggle and you should be able to just about push it into place for the last bit. So I haven't wound the screws all the way down uh, to screw it all the way in. I've literally just um, used the bolts to help align it, get it in the right position. Um, what you actually find is one seal sits slightly higher than the other. So if I show you 
on this old one, for example, the way it sits, obviously it kind of sits like that. So you can see this sill kind of uh, needs to go in first before this one. Okay, so, um, you know, as it sat there, I've just slowly wound the bolts in, um, slowly bit by bit. Um, again, only by hand, just to get it lined up so you can kind of get it firmly seated where it needs to be. Okay, so that's pretty much all the way in. I'm just going to do the other one by hand as well. Now, you can just about get around the back here now to nip it up by hand instead of going back round to the front. Okay, so if I feel that's firmly in place, I just need to nip those two up with the ratchet. Um, you, you don't need to go mega tight. These bolts are just only going into the aluminium. So if you go too tight, you could quite easily strip the thread and that's gonna be a whole world of pain. So just a little nip, that's all you need. And then I'll do the same from the inside and then that's back in. And the next st stage then is I can put this pipe back. Don't forget to put your plug back on, that's down here. Okay, because if you forget that, you'll have engine warning lights coming on. So it's easy enough to plug in. You don't have to remove it, I just find it easier to move these bits about. Then I can put that E10 back in there. and then you can put your pipe back on so that's pretty much it guys I'm pretty sure I can leave you to do the rest um, it's pretty straightforward just putting that pipe uh, back into place um, they do just uh, clip on um, so it should be relatively straightforward push it in Clip it on, you can hear it when it's firmly in place, and then you can put the other bits of your pipe back. Okay, well, that's it then, guys. Um, that's how you change your air oil separator valve. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and hit that subscribe button. Okay, thanks, guys. Take care.